Hi everyone, I'm Rabbi David Levy. In my role as the director of the Jewish Learning Lab, one of the questions I get asked regularly as we're preparing for Passover is, will my children know how to recite the four questions? It's a Jewish life skill that we teach to all of our students. We all know that the youngest person in the room, if they're able, is supposed to be asking these four crucial questions. Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat chametz and matzah. Why on this night only matzah? On all other nights, we eat all vegetables. Why on this night maror? On all other nights, we don't dip even once. Why on this night do we dip twice? On all other nights, we eat sitting, upright, or reclining. Why on this night do we all recline? What I find compelling about this tradition is the reason why the youngest child is tasked with this important job. It isn't just so we can quell about how adorable our children, grandchildren, or nieces and nephews are as they chant these ancient words. But that is a helpful benefit. No, it's because the Seder is intended to be a learning experience for everyone present from the youngest person to the oldest person. It's centered around the Jewish value that learning starts when we're young and continues unabated throughout our lives. So if we look at the Seder as an invitation for learning and not a dry recitation of our Haggadah, what might we need to change? Would we need to add readings or activities to ensure the youngest among us were not bored but challenged by this ancient ritual? I know in my family the table is littered with plagues, masks, and toys to help the littlest learners engage with this story on their own level, as well as opportunities for my sons to act out certain stories from the Haggadah. We are also challenged to find the questions, readings, and experiences that will engage the oldest among us. As the Haggadah challenges us, Chayav Adam Lerot Etatzmo Ki Ilu Hu Yatsami Mitzrayim each of us is obligated to see ourselves as one who actually left Egypt in the days of the Exodus. Which leads me to ponder, how will we make space for intergenerational storytelling of times where our grandparents experience freedom or bondage? How can we ensure that we leave our Seder tables at the end of the night feeling as if we've learned something from the ancient words of our Haggadah about ourselves, or maybe what freedom means to us? or from the stories we share with each other. May we all have a meaningful Passover this year. Chad Sameach.